What up? And welcome to another episode of From the Script to the Screen. Back with another Ranger Reject Edition. Volume 2 covers chapters 6 through 14, which ends up being episodes 4 and 5 of the anime. And pretty action-packed volume. A lot happens here. And so first and foremost, as always, gotta shout out the creator, Neji Haruba. I want to give a shout out to the studio, Your Star Pictures. Appreciate all parties involved. I guess we could start off with the fact that Fighter D, we find out, ends up being alive. And to be honest, since there appears to be so much moving parts in the story, I did think that he was gone for good. We already saw that the divine artifacts inflict a different type of damage on the mortal monsters. And so he ends up being all right because we find out that the Blue Ranger held back a little bit. And so even though he thinks he's in the clear, unfortunately for him, we see that he runs into other surface dwellers. And so I do want to start off with Hibiki, who we find out is an independent ranger because I think his backstory was interesting. More about his parents in general and just their outlook on the monsters and their denouncement of violence. It was interesting to me because even though I could understand the fact that they feel like the humans being the apex predator should try to seek a peaceful resolution with the monsters, they did invade. So I could say I feel 50-50 about it. And that's even more prevalent when we see that what I think is one of the bosses come down and basically take out his congregation or the people that were following him. So again, it's all interesting. We're just starting to scratch the surface of what's actually going on with these monsters and humans. But we do see that this pacifist outlook does get passed down to Hibiki and he feels the same way. We see that he does want to have a resolution with the monsters. Something that we see comes into play at the end of the volume. Once again, the volume ends with a bang and we are getting a deeper look into the Ranger Force because we see that Hibiki and Fighter D change positions. And so Fighter D is officially on an infiltration mission. But from Hibiki's story, something else that I found interesting was the fact that the Dragon Keepers have been changed. We do already know that there's a ranking system and the Blue Ranger that saved Hibiki and his sister is not the one that's the Blue Ranger now. And so not only do we find out that Hibiki's sister is now currently the Pink Ranger, but we see that he was also harboring a monster himself. And so even though there were some differences between the episode and the volume, the sequence of events were changed a little bit. The rest of the conversation between Hibiki and his sister play out in volume three. So I'll be getting to that next. But it's like we've been seeing from the beginning, everything is not what it appears to be. And I think I am starting to understand why the Rangers might not be all they're cracked up to be. At least this current version of themselves. Panel I enjoyed from the volume. I can understand being vicious towards the monsters, but I don't know how it is to be so violent towards your subordinates. So just a pretty crazy image, but see what happens in volume three, which I would think would be episode six and seven. But again, let me know what you guys think about the manga or the anime. Till next time, peace.